Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, we have the columns A, B and C, D and the beam B, C. In the columns, there are no loads. In the beam B, C, we have a uniformly distributed load 4 kN per meter and it is acting for the full span. In the point B, we have a nodal point load 12 kN. It is acting towards the right side. For the columns, the moment of inertia is 4i and for the beam, it is 1.5i. Height of the columns are 4 meter. Length of the beam is 6 meter. Now let us find the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame. In this frame, in the joints B and C, there will be slope. In the point B, we have theta B and in the point C, we have theta C. This frame is a sway type frame. Because of this point load, there will be sway. Since this point load is acting towards the right side, the sway will be occurring towards the right side. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame is 3. In the points B and C, we have the slope. Additionally, we have the sway. Now let us find the fixed end moments. In the columns A, B and C, D, there are no loads. So the fixed end moments M of A, B, M of B, A, M of C, D and M of D, C are 0. In the beam B, C, we have uniformly distributed load 4 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 4, L is 6. Let us apply them. After the calculation, for M of BC, we are getting minus 12 and for M of CB, we are getting positive 12. Now let us make the fully restrained structure. For that, in the points B and C, we have to apply fixed supports. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. We know that in the joints B and C, we have the slope. So let us keep the first coordinate in the point B and the second coordinate in the point C. The third coordinate is the sway. We know that the sway occurs towards the right side. So let us keep the sway coordinate towards the right side. We know the formula to find the displacements. Delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. In the delta matrix, PL matrix and P matrix, we will have three values. Because in this analysis, we have three coordinates and the size of the stiffness matrix will be 3 cross 3. That means we will have three rows and three columns. Inside the delta matrix, we will have the slope theta b, the slope theta c and the sway delta. In this formula, now let us find the p matrix. We know that inside the p matrix, we will have final forces or moments acting in the coordinate direction. In this matrix, to find P1 and P2, we have to check the points B and C if there are any moments. In the points B and C, there are no external moments. So P1 and P2 will be 0. Now let us find P3. Our third coordinate is the sway. We have kept our coordinate towards the right side. To find P3, we have to check the points B and C if there are any horizontal loads. In the point C, there is no horizontal load. In the point B, we have a horizontal load. 
12 kilo newton it is acting towards the right side it is acting in the coordinate direction so we have to apply that value as positive in this formula now let us find the pl matrix we know that inside the pl matrix we will have the forces or movements developed in the coordinates due to the given load let us find p1l our first coordinate is in the point b in the point b we have calculated two fixed end movements m of b a and m of b c we have to add both of them after adding we are getting minus 12 now let us find p2l our second coordinate is in the point c in the point c we have calculated two fixed end movements m of cb and m of cd we have to add both of them after adding we are getting 12 our third coordinate is the sway to find p3l we have to add the horizontal reactions in the points b and c due to the loads in the columns we know that in the columns a b and c d there are no loads so the horizontal reactions in the points b and c will be zero zero plus zero we will get zero in this formula we have found p matrix and pl matrix now let us find the stiffness matrix in the stiffness matrix first let us find the first four values k11 k12 k21 and k22 for that we have to apply unit displacement in the first two coordinates then we can use the formulas if the fair end is fixed the formula is 4 ea upon l and if the fair end is hinged the formula is 2 ea upon l now let us find k11 and k12 for that we have to apply unit displacement in the point b in the point B, there was a fixed support, but when we apply the unit displacement, we can assume that it becomes a hinged support. Now, let us find K11. For that, from the point B, we have to look other ends. In the end A, we have a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4 EA upon L. Length of BA is 4. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for BA is 4i. So instead of i, we have to apply 4i. Now let us look the other end C. In the point C also, there is a fixed support. So we have to apply the same formula 4ea upon L. Length of BC is 6. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for BC is 1.5i. So instead of i, we have to apply 1.5i. After adding these two values for k11, we are getting 5ei. Now let us find k12. For that, from the point C, we have to look other ends. For CD, there is no slope curve. So we should not consider the point D. Let us look the other end B. In the point B, we have a hinged support. If the fair end is hinged, the formula is 2 EA upon L. Length of CB is 6. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia is 1.5i. Finally, for K12, we are getting 0.5 EA. The values of K12 and K21 will be same. In the stiffness matrix, now let us find K22. For that, in the point C, we have to apply unit displacement. In the point C, there was a fixed support. But when we apply the unit displacement, we can assume that it becomes a hinged support. K21, we have already calculated. Now, let us find K22. For that, from the point C, we have to look other ends. In both of the ends, we have fixed supports. So we have to apply the formula 4 EI upon L. Length of CB is 6. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia is 1.5i. Length of CD is 4. And the moment of inertia is 4i. 
after adding these two values we are getting k22 in the stiffness matrix we have calculated these four values now let us find the third row for that we have to apply unit displacement in the third coordinate our third coordinate is the way we have kept our coordinate towards the right side so we have to apply unit displacement towards the right side now let us find k31 for that we have to find the movement in the point b due to the sway the formula to find the movement developed due to sway is 6ea delta upon l square since the sway occurs towards the right side the movement developed due to sway will be negative in the formula let us apply the values length of the column ab is 4 let us apply that the moment of inertia is 4i so instead of i we have to apply 4i delta is 1 finally for k31 we are getting minus 1.5 ei the values of k31 and k13 will be same now let us find k32 for that we have to find the moment developed due to survey in the point c in this formula let us apply the values length of the column cd is 4 and the moment of inertia is 4i delta is 1 after the calculation we are getting minus 1.5 ei the values of k32 and k23 will be same now let us find k33 our third coordinate is the survey to find k33 we have to add the horizontal reactions in the points B and C due to the sway. The formula is 12 Ei delta upon L cube. In this formula, let us apply the values. For both of the columns, the length is 4 and the moment of inertia is 4i and delta is 1. After adding these two, we are getting K33 which is 1.5 EI. These two reactions will be acting in the direction of the survey. That is why the value of K33 will be positive. In the stiffness matrix we have found all of the rows. Let us apply the values and let us keep EI outside. In this formula we have found everything. Let us apply them. We can take EI outside. EI inverse is 1 upon EI. We can add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to find inverse in the calculator, See the description below, there is a link, you can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and got the inverse. Then we can multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we are getting theta b, theta c and delta. Now let us make the slope deflection equations and apply these values and find the final moments. First, let us make the slope deflection equations. In the column AB, we know that the column AB is affected by Suve. So, with the equations, we have to add the Suve movements 6EI delta upon L square. We know that the Suve occurs towards the right side. So, the Suve movements will be negative. In the equations, let us apply the fixed end movements which are 0. Length of AB is 4. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for AB is 4i. So instead of i, we have to apply 4i. In the point A, we have a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So theta A will be 0. In the equations, after applying the values of theta B and delta, we are getting MAB and MBA. 
Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the beam BC. In the equations, first let us apply the fixed end moments which are minus 12 and 12. Length of BC is 6. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for BC is 1.5i. So instead of i, we have to apply 1.5i. After applying the values of theta b and theta c, we are getting mbc and mcb. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the column cd. Since the column cd is affected by suve, with the equations we have to add the suve moments. In the equations, first let us apply the fixed end moments which are 0. Length of CD is 4. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia for CD is 4i. So instead of i, we have to apply 4i. In the point D, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So theta D will be 0. After applying the values of theta C and delta, we are getting MCD and MDC. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments for MAB, MBC, MCD and MDC. We have got negative values. That means they are acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MBA and MCB, we have got positive values. That means they are acting in the clockwise direction. Let us find the horizontal reactions in the column AB. By taking moment table to B, we can find HA and by applying this rule, we can find HB. Now let us find the reactions in the beam BC. By taking moment table to C, we can find VB and by applying this rule, we can find VC. Now let us find the horizontal reactions in the column CD. By taking moment about D, we can find HC. And by applying this rule, we can find HD. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now let us make the free movement diagram. In the columns, there are no loads. In the beam BC, we have uniformly distributed load, 4 kN per meter. To get this value, we have to use the formula WL square upon 8. We are getting 18. Now, using the direction of the movements, we can draw the end movement diagram. Then, let us combine the free movement diagram and the end movement diagram. So that we will get the bending moment diagram.